This is Mildred O. Welcome to my vlog. Growing up in Nigeria, you must have heard the tales of the famous Jaja of Opobo or Lord Frederick Lugard or the amalgamation of Nigeria or is it the Abba Women Riot and the saddest part of them all, the transatlantic slave trade. It is one thing to hear those stories or see them in movies like Roots or The Woman King, but it is another thing to see these things firsthand. Beginning in the 16th century, European merchants initiated the transatlantic slave trade, purchasing enslaved Africans from West African kingdoms and transporting them to Europe and America. Although slave trade is no longer legal anywhere in the world, human trafficking still remains an international problem. My curiosity to know more about the slave trade led me to Ikara Abasi, formerly called the Opobo town. The town lies near the mouth of the Imo River and served as a collecting point for slaves in the 19th century. If you are new to this channel, please do well to hit the subscribe button. And if you are a returning subscriber, thanks for coming back. You are an amazing human and I love you. Follow me on this journey while I unveil the untold story of slave trade in Nigeria. Oh my god, on getting there, I was startled by the sight of the first building which was looking dilapidated and degenerating badly. From information gathered, the government abandoned what is supposed to be a historic tourism attraction all over the world. Luckily, I met Mrs. Cyrilia F. Young Bassi, who was very welcoming and eager to show us around. Okay. Yeah, that's Lomga. That is his brief biography. Then that is the lady that gave the name Nigeria, Laura Shaw. Yeah. Yeah, she was Lolga's wife, from spouse to wife. Yeah. Then, sorry, you might ask why Jonathan is here. He was a centenary president in 2014 when Nigeria was 100 years. So he was the luckiest president to be celebrated by them. So Akbabio was a centenary governor and architect. Oh, then yeah, he was a centenary chairman. Yeah, apart from the house, we do have, apart from the office here, we have the residence where Lord Frederick Daytree who got lived a while here in Ikoroba. Okay. Then this is former Okubu. Okay. Yes. So this was more like his office? Yes, it was more like his office and I uh, carried the gadget here inside the house because of security reasons. Yeah, this was the communication that they used. Well, back they, in those days. Yes, back in those days, what we used for communication. And this was the radio that was used by Lord Frederick Detri Lugan to see his Ferguson product. We also have the alarm cash box. This is it. That was used by Lord Frederick Detri Lugan. Okay. It's safe. Where, where is it from? It's safe. It saves money. Oh, oh. It's, uh, yeah, it's written there. This one they said couldn't be open. No, I'll take you to that one. Okay. Yeah, I'll take you to that one. That one is the first British bank in Nigeria. Yeah, this is a lamp cash box where they used to put safe. If it touches it, it's going to ring the whole place. Mm -hmm. No, 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 that someone is touching it. So right here, we are going towards Lord Lugas' personal residence mm -hmm. while we live in the Corobus. Yeah, this was Calabar before the creation of states. Okay. So we, the white men first landed here. So this is this was where Lord personally lived. Yeah. You could see the house. Yeah. It still has. It's just still then still strong. There's nothing wrong with the house. Hmm. The local government starts occupying the house. Yeah. So you could see someone is still living in the house, still intact. Mm -hmm. According to historical accounts. The Ikora Abasi route was very popular for the colonial masters. They would capture and sell hundreds of thousands of men, women, and children as slaves. Many peasants were traded for insignificant things like umbrellas, kettles, china plates, firearms, guns, and so on. They could literally trade 40 healthy men for just a single umbrella. The tranquil neighborhood gives visitors an immediate feeling of longing for times gone by. Still occupied. But we cannot get in there because nobody's. Of all the women that died. Oh, well, this the... was where they died? Yeah, in 1929. What was the story? I heard they were shot. Yes, they, they were, were shot at because they were rioting. No, they were yeah. shot because of lack of communication. And secondly, 
<laughs> the way they dress, half naked. Okay. Yeah, so the wife see them as kids. So you could see yeah. this bloody signifies the most oh, their souls rest in memory peace. of the 1929 women's war. May their souls rest in peace. Amen. Yeah, the man that shot them, his doctor, <laughs> is Captain Hunter. A and white man. A, yes, a white man. That was his office. Okay. He has a deal. Then some of them jump into this river you see. Oh, to escape. Yes, they jump into this river. And this river is called <laughs> Imo River. The Imo River. Yes, Imo River. Very, very big. Wow, I feel, ah, looking at it alone, so. One notable thing is the structure and quality of strong bricks the colonial masters used in their building constructions. According to Mrs. Seredia, back in the 18th and 19th century, this place was as busy as a marketplace, only that it were humans that were being sold. Seeing this place will allow your imagination run wild on what it looked like back in those days. This path leads us to the famous Bridge of No Return. The Bridge of No Return is one of the sad reminders of the darkest part of Africa's slave trade history. Not a single slave who crossed the bridge ever returned, thus the name The Bridge of No Return. The Bridge of No Return. This jetty was first built in 1795 by the Europeans for the purpose of conveying slaves into waiting ships. It is a floating jetty and has three major underground holding compartments, which were used in storing very stubborn slaves. The compartments have a capacity for about 30 people, but about 150 slaves were stored there at any given time. It was nicknamed the Bridge of No Return, because once a slave stepped on it, they were not allowed to look back, and they never returned. Today you can step on it, look back, walk on this bridge, so God be the glory. So once any slave goes on this bridge, that is the end for yes, the Yes, that is the end. That is the end. <laughs> Back then in secondary school, we had the punishments called journey of no return. <laughs> we had seniors who continue sending you and sending you and sending you. <laughs> so I know the story came from this particular place and it's actually a great thing to see it firsthand. Yes, yeah, so we are heading okay. there now. I won't call it a nostalgic feeling because I wasn't even born when these things happened. But walking on this bridge gave me chills. Imagine what it felt back then, stepping on this bridge and knowing there is no return. It's either death or torture. This floating jetty was built in 1795 and right here is the bunker used to store stubborn slaves before shipping. At this junction, trust me, I was scared to enter. Okay. Wow. Oh my god, very stuffy. Wow, so this is where they stored the slaves. They are right inside the slave bunk or slave bunker where they used to keep the slaves for already waiting sheep. This is their breeding space. Don't yeah. this hole. Yes, we have just two breeding spaces. Two, two breeding spaces where the slaves don't breed. So you can see it was meant for 30, but 150 were given here. This very place was the highlight for me because staying inside here for barely 10 minutes was very discomforting and tricky. Not to think of 450 human beings being packed like sardines with very little breathing spaces or more. The colonial British administration abolished local slavery in 1880s, but they tacitly let it to continue far into 1930s until it was finally stopped in 1940. <laughs> I just feel like it's slave right now. Yes, uh, nine, nine, three, three, three. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the same size. Adjacent to the bridge is an ancient bungalow which served as a warehouse for slaves. Actual slaves were kept there prior to being sold by dealers. She this was the warehouse. Yeah, the warehouse, they offload them. This is where they take care of them. This is where they weigh them, they sell them, give them marks, make them ready for the white men to come and pick them up. So right where I'm standing was the scale used to weigh the slaves. Oh, they weigh them? Yeah, the slaves were weighed like this. Imagine. So the chain I'm holding was connected with where they used to weigh them. Some of them okay. weigh ah. a gallon of palm oil, some weigh dry gin, some weigh refined, some weigh the mirror. 
just mirror. You know so I mean? it's by how you weigh they will sell you. Yes, by then it was traded by butter. Oh my god. So you could see. Oh my god. This is where they will put this iron. Mm. They will put this iron here. Once it's really very hot. Okay. Then they use it to give you slip marks. Ah. At the back. When it came with this and I this. Hey. It's as old as it's left it. To put inside here. When they put it inside the fire and it's very hot, they use it to mark the back of the sleeve so that they will know they are good. So it's not lost. <laughs> this particular room was where the captured slaves were kept before shipping them off. They were always in chains and labeled. Many of them died during the waiting days. Most deaths were due to the inconvenient arrangement of humans as cargo items and the bodies were dumped into the sea. The saddest part of this story is that some of these slaves were sold off by their own family or community simply because of ignorance and being brainwashed. Yeah, okay, they didn't know. They came and they see them with middle, mirror, hot drinks, okay. good things. Okay. So in return, they give their they, children. They, they some thought, <laughs> they just give their children, they say that they will go and learn white men's language, language. And, walk, and be like rich as the white people. And once they are here, you don't have children. No, you don't have children. Can't go back. Yeah, they can't go back. Run. The bridge of no return was the final point of discharge for slaves onto the waiting ships which transported them into slavery, mostly to America and Europe. Proceeding on our journey, we headed for the first British bank in Nigeria and the John Muller House. The safe in the bank is said to have been locked from within and all attempts to break it open seemed futile. This bridge is called the German Bridge and it has been in existence for over 130 years. It leads to the location where the British Bank is located. On getting there, we met a very kind elderly man who was so eager to take us to where the bank was situated. Oh. Yes, they have been trying both army and everybody. They have been trying the way to open this thing. Nowhere. The so last the... operation, they came with a machine, mm. with a gas this is, to open this thing. Yes, the machine break into pieces. Mm. Because according to the story, they say this way the European, when the thing was hard, Enter, he entered the shed and locked it. Yes, sir. Nobody knows his whereabouts. Since then, they have been trying all way to open this. Thing. Even army come and throw their armor here. Uh -uh. Okay, that is why the whole building is scattered. It's just this place that is in. It was a building. They built this thing with the warehouse. It was a building here, surrounding this, this place. Wow. That is the river where they. So this is the river. So that means. Okay. Wow. They have tried various things to break the safe open, but all turned out to be unsuccessful. This looks like a literal definition of a hard nut to crack. One can help but wonder what treasure lies inside this safe. The currencies might have been outdated, but who knows, it could be gold and diamonds. Moving on, we headed to the John Miller House, which is located on the river bank. This ship normally anchored there. Only that they have to link this iron where they anchor there. This is the step. Yeah, they, they bring the slaves the from. Slave, they carry it to the ship. So, uh, according to them, when they cross the uh, bridge of no return, mm. no more. No more that from is, there. So this building was erected in, in 1834. 1834. Uh. John Miller was a famous slave master and his house was built with hardwood which consists of 15 rooms. Some slaves awaiting departure were also kept here. This is a beacon stone that shows the building was constructed in 1834. 
It is a relief that this inhumane act was abolished, but sadly, in present times, we still have this menace hovering around us, disguised as human strict sex trafficking, kidnapping, and child labor. As an individual, we should learn to treat humans with love and respect, no minding their status, age, or tribe. I hope you enjoyed this journey with me as well as I did. If you stay to this minute, I want to say that you are an amazing human and I love you. Please do not forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I love you all and peace.